Hi, my name is Mike and I am an education consultant here at The Profs. Um, I've actually been studying mathematics myself for a very, very long time. I've actually done an undergraduate degree in mathematics at the University of Exeter. I've also done the part three in mathematics at the University of Cambridge, as well as two further mathematics degree at the University of Warwick. So education has been my passion and I've been tutoring all of that time as well on the side. It was a pleasure today for me to be able to talk about how do you get into Oxford to study mathematics. Now, I'm not going to lie, it is a fairly competitive course. We have, in terms of the last cycle, 30% of applicants only getting an interview and then 9% of those applicants getting accepted. Here at the Profs, we have a really impressive track record of having a 55% acceptance rate for Oxbridge candidates. So if you like anything that you hear or see in this video, why not give a click in the description below to find out more about our services, or better yet, ask a question in the comments section. Give a like and subscribe, and we'll be happy to answer a few questions. For now, here are my top five tips on how to get into Oxford for mathematics. And my first tip is make sure you know what degree you're going in for. As said before, Oxford is one of the most competitive universities in the world. In fact, it's one of the oldest universities in the UK. So it's an extremely attractive destination for people to go to. Now, when you actually apply for mathematics at the University of Oxford, you can either go in for a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, but there's more than that. You can either study maths, you could do maths and philosophy, maths and computer science, or maths and statistics. So what we want to see in your UCAS application, in your personal statement, even in your interviews, a love for all of the subjects that you're doing. So what you are going in for has a drastic effect of actually how your application is going to look on paper to your admissions officers. Now, my second tip to get into Oxford is make sure you know every stage of the admissions process. You first need to know that you have to get an equivalent of an A star, another A star, and an A with maths and further maths included. You have to know as well that you, you have as well an admissions test in order to take, usually the mathematical aptitude test or the MAT, that is usually taken mid-October time. So my advice really is to start preparing at the very latest before the summer, um, just after you finish year 12, before you even go into year 13. Because what you want to do there is you want to um, make sure that you have all of your readings done, make sure that you've researched your course thoroughly after you've chosen what kind of mathematics you want to do at Oxford. You've also got the interviews, and this takes a lot of preparation. Um, you cannot just go into it blindly and think that you're going to do okay. No, you need to actually practice with someone. You need to be able to justify why you want to do the course. If I was to hypothetically ask you a question as an admissions officer, um, in terms of your competency in mathematics, I want you to be able to engage in some academic conversation around your subject. I want there to be some demonstration of critical thinking going on, which is a really important thing, not even just at Oxford, but generally at any university for students to be able to show. So we have the admissions test, we have the interviews, and we have the grades. We've also got the UCAS application. The personal statement has got to say everything about why you are, enjoy mathematics, why you'd be good at it, but also what you want to do in the future. We'll talk about the importance of that career plan that you are going to be mentioning in your UCAS application a little bit later. So my third tip in getting into Oxford to study mathematics is make sure that when you are actually making your application, you demonstrate everywhere you love for mathematics. I cannot say this enough. Um, as part of your personal statement, you, the majority of the time when you're writing it, about 80% of that is going to be down to your academic aptitude and your interests. And that's got to be evident very, very early on in the application process. So one thing that I heavily recommend that I have mentioned earlier is reading. Oxford generally have a recommended list of books that you can use for guidance uh, in your different streams of mathematics. Um, but make sure, again, you start reading early. You don't want to just read the blurb or the first chapter and say, I know everything about this topic. I'm very much interested in it because you will be asked about that if you were to go to interview. So you have to be able to justify 
uh, what you know, and you need to be able to do your readings thoroughly. Do not just read the blurb. Mathematical top competitions are also very, very fun as well. The UKMT or the UK Maths Challenge is a massive, massive favorite. Um, if you uh, ended up getting a gold or a silver from that, do mention that as part of your application. I would go even a step further. Um, why not actually um, enter yourself in as an external candidate for the British Mathematical Olympiad? In the majority of cases, you usually have to do very, very well in school, and then they would be able to sort of recommend you take that as a follow-on. Um, but you can enter into these competitions yourself. It is a little bit costly to do check the prices, but it's a great thing to be able to put down on your CV and your personal statement. One of the most wonderful things about the questions that come up here as well is that they are asked in a university style of question. They go beyond your curriculum at school and you do not want to show your understanding of mathematics or your passion for it is limited to just that. We want to be able to see that your understanding and interest in mathematics goes beyond that curriculum, perhaps going into a university level of understanding. So I definitely would re recommend having a look at the British Mathematical Olympiad there. And on top of that, there are loads of talks that are going on uh, across the country um, with public access, usually hosted by universities, uh, that talk about really interesting topics in uh, mathematics that you won't necessarily need to be a uni student in order to understand or engage in. And of course, if there are summer schools available, I definitely would recommend going to one just to get the experience to say that you've worked with an international community of like-minded peers. Um, you, again, had another experience to develop your interests um, more cohesively uh, within a student body. And you also are excited about the prospect of going to university to study a subject at university level. On to number four now with our top tips. And my next one is make sure you have a robust and solid career plan. And I can even extend this and say that actually you want to be imagining that you're going to Oxford to study mathematics tomorrow and you know exactly what modules you're going to be doing and actually how you're going to be interacting with the course. Um, it's really, really good to plan this early on this far ahead because that furthers your motivation for going on to this course. Again, they're not going to be giving a place to just anybody and they certainly won't be giving a place to someone who hasn't really thought out how it's going to be useful to them. Now, as a recommendation at the profs, we recommend five years after graduation um, so that not only do you cover the transition period of getting into work, maybe starting off at a company if that's what you want to do, but also you get into your specialisms and perhaps you cover your dream goal if you have one. Uh, the goal that you aspire to achieve, the profession that you want to be able to reach um, way, way in the future. Although saying that, most people that actually study mathematics at Oxford, they mainly want to go and do research. So that's not a bad thing to be able to put down. I remember as part of my university application, I wanted to say that eventually I wanted to become a lecturer uh, within mathematics. So put down your passions, make sure they are strong, and make sure that whatever you say you want to do, it heavily relates to the content and the opportunities available that is at the University of Oxford. Now, you may be thinking, how do I do that if I'm writing a UCAS application for multiple subjects at once? And what I generally recommend is you write your application with your top choice in mind. Other universities will understand that you cannot write an application perfectly for a maximum of five universities at once. So aim to write for Oxford without necessarily mentioning any particular courses. But again, remember to spend at least 80% of the time talking about your academic interests, your reading, and your engagement within the subject. And my final top tip to finish off, um, which I think is very, very apt, is to actually get a mathematics tutor on board to help you. Uh, there are some schools that do not offer these kinds of services simply because of funding issues or they don't have staff available uh, in order to be able to help with this. And one-to-one -one tuition, one-to-one uh, -one sort of advice on the overall application process definitely helps with that, especially getting ready for that MAT, which is such a different kind of exam to A-level exams that are taken. 
At the Profs, we offer a multitude of different services, including tuition, um, in terms of help with your A-levels, also with university, but also we're preparing you for that MAT, as well as every single other aspect of that admissions process in getting into Oxford, including the interview. We even run practice interviews as part of our sessions before our students go into that room and meet with the admissions team. So why not get in touch with us today? Once again, we've got our information in the description below. All it takes is a little bit of a click and an investigation of our services. You can call us uh, with a number that is appearing on screen as well if you would like to hear more specifics about our services. Or even better, why not ask us a few more questions about this course in the comments below. Give us a like and subscribe and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Until then, best of luck with your application.